The first segment of the Hot 7 Nightly News is brought to you by Flo. Tonight, the St. Jude Hospital reconstruction project features prominently on the Parliament agenda on Tuesday. Opposition leader Alan Chesney challenges a report on his administration's plans for the reconstruction of St. Jude Hospital. And a shortage of aviation fuel here is threatening to stymie the success of the recovering tourism sector. This is the Hot 7 Nike News with Daniela Edwin. Good evening. It is Tuesday, January 17th, 2023. I am Daniela Edwin. Welcome to the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. We are on Flow Channel and 17, Kiss FM, the Caribbean Hot FM mobile app, and the Caribbean Hot 7 TV Facebook page. Not forgetting those of you using the Hot 7 plug and play antenna, thank you for joining us. High on the agenda for Tuesday's Parliament sitting was the contents of the report on the St. Jude Hospital reconstruction project completed by the Review Committee. Health Minister Moses Jabaptiste divulged that one of the recommendations put forth is the inclusion of the more modern facility constructed by the former administration in the project. Prime Minister Pierre also reaffirmed that the St. Jude Hospital will be completed before for the next election. The lower house of assembly gathered in the parliamentary chambers on Tuesday to debate on a motion to advise the cabinet of ministers to consider and approve the recommendations presented by the review committee for the completion and commissioning of the St. Jude Hospital to facilitate the move and transfer of operations from the George Odlum National Stadium to the original St. Jude Hospital site. The government of St. Lucia had already announced its intention to recommence works on the original St. Jude site under the advice of the St. Jude Reconstruction Review Committee. Preliminary works commence on the site on November 1, 2022, including cleanup of the premises and laying the groundwork for the erection of a fence. Those initial works are expected to conclude in March 2023. Prime Minister Pierre had long previewed that the truth about St. Jude would be exposed and that is what he sought to do in Parliament. Health Minister Moses Jabatiste on the sidelines of Parliament indicated that the motion would be debated in the House to allow the general public an opportunity to be privy to the details of the St. Jude reconstruction project. I think it's a very important day and there are a number of people who say, you know, why rehash the St. Jude Hospital um, complaints and why do we debate this in Parliament. I think it's very important because the people of St. Lucia voted for the St. Lucia Labour Party and part of the reason is because um, people felt that the last government not only delayed the completion of the St. Jude Hospital Rehabilitation Project but there are lots of things that happen and people, seek, people are seeking justice. So I think it is very important for the public of St. Lucia to get the details and for us to lay the, the report of the review committee in the parliament so it can be made available to the public. While remaining relatively tight-lipped about the recommendations provided by the review committee ahead of parliament, the health minister divulged that a portion of the modern facility constructed by the former administration would be incorporated in the project. Previously, the government articulated that only the original St. Jude site would be a part of the reconstructed medical complex. Well, in fact, the, the, the most recent review committee um, did recommend that we go to phase one of the project, which is really the, the, the former St. Jude Hospital, and to incorporate one or two buildings that were, 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 put, that, that were put on ground recently. So the recommendation is actually to, to uh, not continue the new box or the new building um, which the last government started. That is the actual recommendation. And we are going to spend time today to explain these recommendations. And these recommendations are not coming from politicians. These recommendations are coming from professionals, engineers and so on, people who sat down and, and looked at the options and, and decided and decided to advise the government not to continue with the, the latest um, um, structure which the last government in, erected at, at OG. Despite the myriad of challenges that have plagued the St. Jude project and the 13-year-long wait, 
Pierre affirmed that the hospital will be delivered before his tenure as prime minister ends. That is the whole object of the exercise to finish St. Jude. But by the time this term is over, you'll have a brand new, you'll, have, you'll be in St. Jude's. There'll be no, no, no more stadium. You'll be in St. Jude's by the end of this term. But Take my word for it. Reporting for the Hot 7 TV News, I am Kareem Nelson. Meanwhile, opposition leader Alan Chastney is challenging the report provided by the most recent St. Jude Reconstruction Project Review Committee. He contends that the report does not possess substantive evidence to back up the continuation of works on the original St. Jude site. Chastney also queries the impartiality of the review committee. Karim Nelson tells us more. The Opposition United Workers' Party continues to push back against the decision to recommence construction on the original St. Jude Hospital building. The Opposition has long advocated for the current regime to reconsider their move and continue work on the more modern building which commenced under the former administration. Taking specific aim at the most recent report completed by the St. Jude Reconstruction Project Review Committee to be debated in Parliament, Opposition leader Alan Chastney argues that the document lacked any thorough details. He contends that the report does not possess any substantial evidence, which suggests that returning to the older building is better than completing the facility constructed by his administration. Here it is, we have a motion coming to the House um, asking Parliament to advise Cabinet. Now, what's interesting is that a Cabinet decision on this issue had already been made. And in fact, when you read the report on page three of their report, it starts off with that, that Cabinet had made a decision and given them the directive to proceed using phase one, the original um, site of the project. So I'm not so sure how um, objective um, the report is. When you go through the report, what's very clear, the report is not very thorough. The report has no really details. The report's providing zero evidence to substantiate any of its, of its claims. Despite the review committee's proposal, Chastney doubled down by affirming that it is irresponsible on the part of the current regime to pursue works on the older facility. He asserts that the medical facility will never gain international certification. I could not be convinced, and certainly this report didn't do anything to convince me that moving into um, the old building, um, which has no planning approval, more than likely will never get planning approval, could never become internationally certified given the structures of the building um, and that they would find ways to justify moving into that building when you have a modern building ready to be moved into. And I think that the fundamental issue here is that the plan was to move into the building, the new building in a phase-based pro uh, process, um, to move into the ground floor with 90 beds so that we could move the people from the stadium as quickly as possible. And then as we know whether in fact we want to grow health um, as, a, as a, a sector, meaning start providing uh, greater care for the people of St. Lucia by opening up our services internationally, um, then we would then have a, a final design for upstairs. Reporting for the Hot 7 TV News, I am Kareem Nelson. A shortage of aviation fuel in St. Lucia is threatening to freeze the momentum of the recovering tourism industry. The concerns were expressed by Dr. Ernest Hilaire as he responded to questions about refueling challenges for airlines arriving in St. Lucia. Airlift into the island has been problematic, especially since the grounding of Liat and the decision to liquidate its assets. However, government has been sparing no effort to increase tourism arrivals into the island since the lifting of COVID restrictions. But a new challenge has emerged, raising concerns about the shortage of aviation fuel needed for airlines landing here. According to Hilaire, the concession for the commodity in St. Lucia is held by a private company which is currently engaged in talks with Slasper on the way forward. Hilaire is hopeful for a speedy resolution. We cannot be boasting of all the successes within the tourism industry and you know really encouraging more airlines to come and have to deal with you know issues such as this um, and they did assure me that they were going to have that conversation and to make sure it doesn't happen again um, you know you, you cannot expect visitors to be happy when when to return a flight has to, to go to Puerto Rico for refueling and then go on to Miami 
but Slasbad has given us the assurance that they, they will um, seriously engage the local supplier. Meanwhile, Hille has also commented on the growing number of cruise vessels making calls to St. Lucia since the start of the 2022-2023 cruise season. On Wednesday this week, Port Castries is expected to welcome one of the largest cruise vessels ever to Booth here. We have made a determined effort to try to get more lines to come to St. Lucia and to try to bring our numbers up. And we, we are seeing the results of that. We are expecting on Wednesday the largest ship that in terms of passengers um, to arrive in St. Lucia. Um, Piano, Aviva, or River uh, will be arriving on Wednesday morning. So expect to see quite a lot of people um, about podcast reason on and about on Wednesday. <clears throat> we'll make even greater efforts to get more cruise lines to come to St. Lucia. And we just concluded our first round of discussions with GPH on an agreement for the redevelopment of certain parts of podcast series. Reporting for the Hot 7 TV News, I am Eldridge Charles. Still in the first segment of the news, the POV. The POV provides you, our valued viewers and listeners, an opportunity to sound off on trending issues in the news only from your point of view. How does traffic affect your morning commute? Let me tell you, the traffic is ridiculous on the morning. To talk for the morning when you come in from the north, coming to Castries, and even worse when you get into Castries itself. I late for doctor's appointment, I late for work, I late for leisure, I late for everything. Very badly. Every morning I was taking traffic at Reno by Reno. Like for about 15 to 20 minutes and I'd always be late and that's not nice. So you're really need to do something about the road and the traffic. As a student of SALCC, it makes me very late for class. Um, whether it's traffic coming to school or from leaving home, it makes me very late for class. Well, from Grozile to Castries, mm -hmm. uh, depending on the time I go down, because usually from like 7, from 7 to like 12, they usually have a lot of traffic on the road, yeah. Unless you don't get up early, you'll stick in that. Sometimes when I'm running late, you know, I just want the traffic to move on and move, 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 because you know time going, time going, it passing by the minute. As long as you see it, 8 o'clock, it's already 8.20, so that's like a major problem. But other than that, when I'm not running late, it's not really a problem though. Traffic is very bad for stu students who are going to school because it not only makes us late, but it makes us miss out on the work that we're paying for at school. Well, on your way to and from school? Well, I'm not getting traffic to school, from school, but when I come in to school, like, I probably leave, like, very early and still, like, wait, like, probably, like, 20 minutes in a traffic curly sack. It can be very detrimental when having to attend classes, especially sometimes with, like, today, the weather systems, having to leave your house to come to a class for 8 o'clock. And, you know, especially since this morning I was actually on a bus and somebody was like, but what kind of thing is that traffic? They always have traffic all the time because students always going to school, same time, imagine a school with 1,500 students and all of us have class at 8 o'clock in the morning. Parents have to drop their train, people need to go to work, people have to go and buy food and all of that. And all of that just builds and when we late for class then we miss out and then we have to catch up again and it's just, it can be really stressful. It can be. Yes, You're watching the Hot 7 TV nightly news coming up next. The government and opposition continue to trade blows over the findings of an independent consultant into the HIA redevelopment project. And plans are afoot to redesign the respiratory hospital into a polyclinic. Stay with us for the details to these stories and so much more right after this. 
The first segment of the Hot 7 Nightly News was brought to you by Flow.